Ulthar, Selephus, the Plateau of Lang, the Dreamlands. So far we have discussed various cosmic entities and alien species, but the Dreamlands is an alternate dimension where these things can all converge. The Dreamlands, while technically part of the Cthulhu mythos, takes on a very different feel compared to Lovecraft's other stories in the mythos. A setting filled with fantastical creatures and locales, the dimension is capable of telling a story steeped in fantasy. Lovecraft created the Dreamlands as part of his Dream Cycle, a series of stories taking place in this alternate dimension. The longest and most significant of these is the Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath which features the protagonist, Randolph Carter, and his determination to plunge through the dreamlands in search of Kadath, where no one has ever been. The book is a controversial piece within the Mythos community, since it is much more akin to Alice in Wonderland than the Shadows over Innsmouth. Technically, the dreamlands covers a mirror universe of our own, but generally when referring to the dreamlands, it includes only Earth's dreamlands. There are multiple ways to enter the dreamlands, and it is easiest at a young age, when you can enter the dimension at will. This ability fades with age, and few adults are capable of doing so. Certain narcotics are said to assist this, and there are also supposedly physical gateways in our world where one can enter the dreamlands, but they are in dangerous locations in both the real and dream world. Those that live in the real world and can enter the dreamlands are often great heroes in the other dimension able to create entire cities with pure mental power. However, if you do die in the dreamlands, your physical body receives a potentially fatal shock, and you can never again visit the dreamlands. If you enter the dimension physically, you also risk physical death, but you do benefit from a much longer lifespan, as time passes much differently in the dream dimension. The deities of the dreamlands are known as the Great Ones, but it doesn't seem they are related at all to the Great Old Ones, as they are much weaker and more akin to immortal humans who can be wounded and deceived. They listen to the thoughts and prayers of humanity, but their purpose is unclear. They are protected by more powerful deities, most notably Nyarlathotep, who treats the Great Ones with contempt, so it's unclear why he protects them. There are also a great number of alien species that reside within the Dreamlands, too many to cover here. A few examples include the Gugs, a monstrous race of giants without the ability of speech, who are banished to the underworld by the Great Ones for blasphemous crimes. There are the Ghouls, pale, dog-like humanoids that feast on human corpses and can enter the physical world through crypts. Despite this, Ghouls are not usually hostile, and indeed have their own language. There are also the Moon Beasts, who, as you might expect, reside on the dark side of the moon and resemble horrible toads with tentacles instead of eyes. They deal mainly in slave trades using large galleys between the moon and the dreamlands. And there are, of course, the cats of Ulthar, an intelligent race of felines that can speak their own tongue, and who live in a city where it is forbidden to harm a cat, punishable by death. The dreamlands are an interesting part of the Cthulhu mythos, as it shows that the fiction doesn't have to be purely grim horror and forbidden knowledge. The dream cycle falls more into the category of weird fantasy than cosmic horror, but I believe it to be a welcome addition to the mythos. Nyarlathotep is still present there, as is Nodens and likely other deities. So next time you fall asleep, think about the Cavern of Flame and the Enchanted Wood. Try to imagine the grand port city of Dilathleen and the grand unwavering metropolis of Selephus, the dreaded Plateau of Lang and the frigid unknown wastes of Kadath because maybe there is more to dreams than we believe.